Previously, o Mariano pelo Mundo. Gente, cause away. Lá vamos nós. 60 milhões de anos atrás. Grava essa data. Você conhece Game of Thrones? Cachorro! Segunda lenda, Giant's Causeway tem esse nome por causa do gigante irlandês, Finn McCoe. Segura esse salto. Olha que lugar incrível. O planeta criou. Gigante ou ciência? Talvez você deva ver por si próprio. Obrigado, universo. Obrigado, papai do céu. Agora é pra sair. Olha, partiu. Fala de novo. É. Viajar? Bora, valeu. Partiu. A vida é uma viagem, simbora viajar. Barack é Michelle Obama. Você sabia que o ex-presidente dos Estados Unidos tem um pezinho na Irlanda? Pois é, o vilarejo de Moneywall é uma região rural situada a 130 km de Dublin. Foi daí que saíram os tataravós do presidente em 1850, com destino ao novo mundo. Let's 
Wars movie coming up. I don't know the mob guys. Team Dave. We even have a speaker on my team. James, your team sucks. Team Dave strikes. Well done. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. Star Wars, starring Harrison Ford, that legend of an Irishman. Well done, Team Dave. Okay, here's your next one. You gotta be quick, guys. Are you ready? The Empire Strikes Back. That's the same one. I just want to test you. Okay, here's the second one, guys. Was that Team Dev? Yeah. No. No? No. no. Yeah. no. Okay. Fabulous village is there, very friendly people. Look at the golf course on the right-hand side, guys. It's gone white from the ice, the frost. Last summer, the Irish Open was held here. So that's their most famous golf competition. Professional. Professionals came from all over the world to play here. And it was won by the golfer, Justin Ram. 100,000 spectators. We have no idea where they stayed. This is pure isolation. 25 years ago, Bill Clinton was playing a round of, of golf here. The day before Bill Clinton was to play the Hinch Golf Course, oh, the Secret Service, Monicus. they changed the name for one day while Hillary. Can you imagine the paparazzi? Hillary walking into Monicus. Anyway, guys, here's your next movie score. Titanic, yeah, well, Team Dave, well done. What? Team Dave, yeah, no? no, no? Do you want to join my team? Yeah. Do you want to, you want to join my team? You're brilliant. Jump, just join my team, come. Sit in your dad's lap, your mom's lap or something. I'm only, yeah, yeah, he's on my team now. <laughs> Good man. Get back. He's, he's only joking, get back. We need more of you. What's his team? Where's Team Dave? Anyway, that's Titanic, guys. I worked for another company, I'm only a while for a year. I actually talked Apesar de fotogênica, a Torre O'Brien não tem muito interesse histórico. Foi construída no século XIX para que os visitantes pudessem admirar os penhascos com mais conforto. Ah, ela é muito fofinha para tirar foto. Cliffs of Moria são falésias ao longo da costa ocidental do país, localizadas no condado de Clary e consideradas o principal cartão postal da Ilha Esmeralda. Elas existem há pelo menos 300 milhões de anos. Você sabe o que é Cliffs, né? São penhascos. E Moria é o nome que deu para penhasco. <risos> Esse céu. Eu tô acostumada, mas tem tanto tempo que eu... Ontem sim e hoje mais ainda. Hoje nem vi chuva. Então foi maravilhoso esse passeio. Com a graça de Deus. O busão tá ali. Thank you. I'm so thankful for everything that is happening in my life. The bad things, the good things. Everything has a reason. So... Yeah. I got it.
want to come to the west of Ireland. Go to Tilly, you're going straight down here, guys. You'll see the island. Pier, straight over to the islands. They're beautiful to stay on. But yeah, the cliffs now on the islands. So, would you believe, when the British came to Ireland, and through the centuries, when they took this land from the Irish, they never stepped one foot on the Aran Islands. So the Aran Islands has never changed, traditionally. They're all Gaelic speaking. So when there's no tourists, they speak Gaelic. They will not speak English. You could say that's Ireland over there. The British were not interested in the Aran Islands, but they were interested in sending all the Irish over there. That was the plan. So we looked at just want to show you something that's very special to us Irish guys. And if you go into a traditional pub in Galway, you will probably see this burning in the fireplace. When I was growing up in Dublin, in my grandmother's house, she would tell me stories sitting around the fireplace. And what was burning in the Irish fireplace was turf, peat. That's a Mexican standoff nearly. That was close. Well done, James. Excellent driver, James. He's used to that. And he had your eyes closed that time as well. Look at there, guys. Look on your left-hand side. That's what we call turf. So they still use that process today. They burn it in the fireplaces. Many things happen for us Irish people in our culture. We spend a lot of time in the pub because we like to talk and tell stories. But the fireplace plays a major part in an Irish family. We would sit around the fireplace. Here's an expression that we have in Ireland in Gaelic. This is how it's pronounced in Gaelic. Nelain Tinton, Mada Hinton Fain. Nelain Tinton, Mada Hinton Fain. And that means there's no fireplace like your own fireplace. The modern version of that is there's no place like home. It's a beautiful little piece of Gaelic. Okay guys, so we're going to be driving along here, a little bump in the road coming up. After the tree line, I want to show you something. There's a hotel coming up straight ahead after the tree line. I've stayed in it, it's a beautiful hotel. Only cost 49 uh, euro per person to stay in it overnight. Beautiful interior. The exterior though is a little bit strange. So we've nicknamed this hotel, we call it the Lego Castle. It is, real name is the Boring Castle Hotel. But we call it the Lego Castle. Very clever. Look at this beautiful, romantic castle. Medieval castle sitting on the hill. As I said earlier on, we have thousands of these buildings. This is Balmalacan Castle. It was originally built by the O'Connor clan. When you hear this word clan, this means powerful family. And it is strategically placed on top of a hill. At the top of that castle, you have a 360 degree view of the west of Ireland. You can see unbelievable views of the cliffs of Moher. You can see if anybody's trying to come in and invade this part of Ireland from the Atlantic Ocean. You can see Connemara and breathtaking views of the Burren. You can also stay there in the Balm Lacken Castle Hotel, the yellow building. It's like a B&B. &B. It's a really interesting place to stay in because you can go hiking then in the Burren. The Burren stretches for 97 square miles. And what a place to hike. But yes, there's something romantic about Balmalak Castle. So very soon, guys, it will be my privilege to show you the burn. National Geographic, I mentioned today, this morning, they said this is the most breathtaking landscape they've seen in Ireland. It covers 1% of Ireland. But it wasn't always part of Ireland. Because the burn was actually at the bottom of the Mediterranean. And because of the ice age, we're going to drive through it along the coast. 75% were flower species. Some rare and some completely unique. You also will find 30% of a flora and fauna, which is butterfly and moth species. And if you go hiking, you might come across wild animals like foxes, wild goats. You might even see the rock cat, which is the pine marten. You'll see badgers. And if you're lucky enough, you might even see the peregrine falcon hovering above your head.
I feel sorry for some people renting cars out here. I've seen them throughout the years, and you can see their knuckles on the steering wheel are white. Pure concentration. Scary. And then we get camper vans in the summer. They are a nightmare to us, to James, aren't they? Because they're not used to driving on these roads, guys, and they normally drive on the other side of the road where they're from. So yes, we've been stuck in traffic on many occasions in the barn. That's a nice thing to see though, the hunt, we haven't seen that for a long time. So, very traditional around here guys, they have their own traditions. He's not going to get by you James, is he? You've blocked the entire road. So I love working with you, James. James, we have some from Mexico. Oh, yes, I'm going to play a song for you, my dear. Stand off. Ah, it's just like two gunslingers, the old West. I've got a song for you, my dear. I'm going to play it for you now in a moment. Okay, we have movement. No, he should still reverse back, shouldn't he? Like, come on. He's getting a little bit of common sense here. Well done. A little bit of movement. Oh, so cute. I'll be a little bit though. Guys, it looks like uh, the crossing over to your side. There's a horse on its own, it's even losing his rider. Road with the coffin to its final resting place. Really, yeah, really traditional. Not nice being stuck behind it though. Bent. Now the brutal thing back then in 1845 was the Irish were only allowed to live off potatoes. They couldn't go into somebody's land and hunt wild animals, forage wild mushrooms. They could not even pick up sticks for firewood. If they were caught doing this, they were put on a ship and sent to Van Diemen's Land. Yep. Van Diemen's Land is Australia, and they would never ever see Ireland again for stealing food to feed their family. The family was a blight, a disease that was destroying crops. It started in Little Belgium, made its way to Germany, made its way to Russia, made its way to Scotland. There you go, there's the cattle up on the hill, but it's not afraid at all, are you? So yes, this is the part of Ireland where it first struck, right here where we're driving, to the west. This is a description of the famine by an elderly farmer. He woke up one morning, he lived right beside the burn, he looked out to the Atlantic Ocean, and he's seen this dark clouds coming in from the ocean. He thought it was a storm. But it was a mist, a fog, and it was very dark. It hovered over the land for several days. And when it dissipated and disappeared completely, this farmer looked down at the soil. He looked at his potato crop, and a stench was coming from the land. The famine had arrived. It would be more devastating in Ireland than any other country because of the oppression of Catholics. It will last for five years. One and a half million Irish people will die of starvation. And the years that will follow, over three million will emigrate, destroying our population. There is probably people sitting on this bus right now who have Irish ancestry that goes back to the famine. So three million would emigrate. They would sail across the Atlantic Ocean in ships that are what they were, they were not seaworthy. They were suffering from diseases like typhoid and cholera. They were skin and bone. And the ones that were lucky enough to make it, well, they would make their new home on the east coast of America. Others would go to Canada. Others would go to Australia. The vast majority of the Irish would go to America. The east coast, they would make their new home. When they arrived, other nationalities were looking at them. Italians, French, Spanish, Portuguese, and the Irish didn't even pass as human beings. They were half dead. And their big problem 
They couldn't speak English, only Gaelic. And when they were learning down how to speak English, they were looking for employment, and they would be meted or greeted at shops, and signs would be in the windows, and it would say, no blacks, no dogs, no Irish. They had a tough start in the new world of America. But something happens. It just takes the Irish 10 years to progress. And out of all the nationalities there, they progress the quickest. It is incredible what they achieve in such a short time. The first thing they do is learn how to speak English. They get an education. Some of them do exceptionally well. Some of them become politicians and judges. Others will build the streets, lay down the tracks, and build the train stations. Others will build the skeletal frames of the skyscrapers. And a vast majority of Irish will become the police department of Manhattan. Others will become the fire department. It is incredible what they're achieving. The British Home Secretary is in Manhattan in 1862. It's just 12 years since the famine has ended. And he cannot believe what he's witnessing. He sends a telegram to the British Prime Minister in 10 Downing Street, and he states, an Irish nation is growing in Manhattan. More than one third is Irish born. That's 1862. Would you believe it? Stopping. It's closed for the winter months, but it will reopen in the summer months. There it is on your left hand side. Even the flag, the Irish flag is taken down. But that will be put back up as spring comes. That is Dunguir Castle on your left. Beautiful castle. Well, more of a medieval fortified house. So the bumpy winding roads are going to last for about five, six, seven minutes maybe, guys. And then we'll be on more wider. Viajar? Bora, valeu, partiu! A vida é uma viagem, simbora viajar!